if you're concerned that you don't have enough pollinators in your garden, or if you want to collect pure seed, or if you want to just have fun, this might be what you're looking for. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, a master gardener who discusses everything gardening so that you can become a better gardener. Today, let me show you how to hand pollinate squash. You may never need to hand pollinate, but it is a nice skill for gardeners to have. For the most part, nature just takes care of itself. and You can expect that your flowers will be pollinated and that you'll get fruit. But there are a few instances where knowing how to hand pollinate and then doing it may be necessary in your garden. First off, if you have the lack of pollinators. If you go out to your garden and you don't see a lot of bees, you don't see a lot of insect activity, maybe because you or your neighbor might be using insecticide. Well, in this case, it may be necessary for you to hand pollinate your pumpkins and your squashes and a lot of your other plants so that you can get the fruit that you're after. Also, if you want to save the seed, hand pollination may be necessary. A single bee moving from flower to flower is enough to cross pollinate different types of squashes. So if you're trying to save a particular variety, then you're probably going to have to hand pollinate and take some protective action that I'll show you here in just a little bit to make sure that that seed is pure so that it hasn't been cross pollinated. And the third reason, and the one that I really find enjoyable is just doing it, especially for kids. This is a great activity for them to get involved with the garden to do the work of a bee. And so if you're educating your kids or your grandkids or your neighbor kids about gardening and about pollination, by hand pollinating and explaining how it works and how bees normally do it, it's a wonderful activity to get everybody involved. Squash and pumpkins in particular are among the easiest plants to hand pollinate. One of the main reasons is they're monoecious plants. Now, monoecious plants have flowers that are either male or female. So it requires moving the pollen from a male flower to a female flower to pollinate and get the fruit. And normally that's what the bees and the other pollinators are doing. There's a lot of plants that you're growing in your garden that have the male and the female parts within the same flower. The peppers and the beans and the tomatoes. That's why they tend to self-pollinate. But you need to move pollen when you're talking about squashes. Squash is pretty easy to hand pollinate because it's pretty simple to tell the difference between the male flower and the female flower. And it is important to understand that you need to move pollen from the male flower to the female flower. There's a couple pretty easy ways to identify which flower is which, and I'll show you with these flowers here. The first thing to look for is the stem. Now with male flowers, the stem will be nice and straight and uniform all the way to the flower. So this is a male flower, this one right next to it that hasn't opened is long and slender all the way to the flower. It's a male flower. This is a male flower. This is a male flower. All of these flowers right here are male flowers. And so right here, all by itself, is a female flower. When we look at the stem leading to the flower, we see that the stem is swollen. It's like a little bulb. It expands between the stem and the base of the flower. This is where the ovaries are. This is what we're hoping to get pollinated and what will grow into a fruit. This happens to be a pumpkin, so it's really easy to see, but there's a noticeable difference between the male and the female flowers. As I look at this zucchini, I can see that this flower right here has the same straight stem. This is a male. As I look down here, I can see that this flower that's just starting to develop 
has a swollen area behind the flower. And this one has a swollen area behind the flower. So these are going to be female flowers. You don't even need to wait until they bloom to be able to notice the difference in these developing flowers. I can see the same thing with these developing yellow squashes. Here's a nice straight stem, there's a straight stem, there's a straight stem, those are all males. But this one right here is swollen. And even this little tiny one and the one behind it are swollen. Those will be females, these will be males. What is typical in the squashes is that the male flowers will develop first and there will be more of them. We saw that with the pumpkins. A big grouping of male flowers and then a female flower all by itself. That's so when the female blossom opens, there will be plenty of male flowers there ready for the bee to pollinate the female. And that's important because the female flower has just that first day. After it opens, it needs to be pollinated right away. If it's not pollinated in that first day, well, then pollination isn't going to happen and that flower is going to drop off of the plant. So especially early in the life of squashes, you may see a whole bunch of male flowers and no females at all. Don't worry too much about that. Have patience because the female flowers will come and all those males are ready to pollinate it. As you get ready to hand pollinate, there's another way to tell the difference between the male and the female flower. And that's by looking inside it. So let's take a closer look at this flower. So as we look inside the male flower, we see a single structure. This is the stamen. And the stamen is loaded with pollen. It's the pollen from the stamen that's going to the female flower. If we take off these flowers, the petals, you can see the little structure that's left behind. It's a bit phallic looking. It's the male part of the flower. And this is what we're going to use to pollinate the female. The female flower is noticeably different. This whole structure is called the pistil. And so the pollen from the stamen will come to the pollen within this flower, which is part of the pistil, and that's how we'll get fruit. But inside, it's a noticeable difference in structure. Let me show you a close-up of this. So if we remove the petals of this female flower, you can see the whole structure at work. You can see the ovaries, and it leads up to multiple stalks. Instead of the single one that we saw on the stamen, this has lots of different pieces loaded with pollen. So the male pollen fertilizes the female pollen, which signals the ovaries to grow and we get the delicious fruit with all the seeds inside. And those seeds come from the pollination. So when we hand pollinate, all we're doing is transferring the pollen from the stamen to the pistil. And there's a few different ways to do that. A couple ways that are often recommended are to use a paintbrush or a cotton swab to take the pollen. And we'll just dab this into the male flower and then dab it into the female flower, or do the same with the cotton swab. So here's how that works. We take a swab and we collect some pollen from the male and then move it around the female. Or we take a paintbrush and do the same thing, where we're collecting some of the pollen and putting it on the female. And often there's pollen at the bottom. So if you can see that, there's pollen all over the bottom of this brush, the tip. And that's what we're spreading all over the female flower. And a third way is to take the male flower off the plant and then dab the male flower on top of the female flower using 
the male flower as a paintbrush to transfer that pollen. I like to use the male flower as a paintbrush to pollinate the female flower. I think it's just more fun. And that's the method I like to show kids when we get out into the garden. And you can do this any time that you see the female flower open. Just grab one of the males and pollinate the female. But if you want to save the seed, it's important that you hand pollinate the flower before the bees or any other creature. because they're still going to be around. And though you might get the flower mostly pollinated, well, if a bee comes soon after and it's already visited a different type of squash plant, well, then you run the risk that some of the seeds that will develop will be cross-pollinated with another squash. So the best time to do the hand pollination, if you're saving seeds, is in the morning before the pollinators are active. So if you want to save seeds, start scoping out your garden a couple days in advance and look for the female flowers with the bloom that's just getting ready to open. So this flower is mostly developed and tomorrow, maybe the next day, it's going to bloom. So if I want to hand pollinate this one to save seed, I'm going to keep my eye on it so I can catch it first thing in the morning on the first day that it opens up. Let me show you the whole practice in action right here with this flower. There's a female flower that just opened this morning that I'm going to go ahead and pollinate. So I take my male flower, I'll take off the petals, and then using it as a paintbrush, I'll just dab all around the female flower. and I've pollinated it. If you're hand pollinating because you're concerned about a lack of pollinators or just to have fun, go ahead and leave the blossom open. That gives the opportunity for any pollinators that might be present to find that flower. But if you're hand pollinating for the purpose of saving the seed, then you want to actually close up the blossom at this point or enclose it in a cloth or paper bag so that no pollinators can get to it. What I like to do is just go ahead and tie up the petals to keep insects away. So I'll just tie the blossom closed with a little bit of twine. And I like to use the fluorescent twine just so I can see it and I know which flowers that have been pollinated. Remember, the best time to do this is first thing in the morning before any pollinators are active. So if I use a stamen from the same plant to fertilize the pistil on that plant, I feel pretty good that the seed I have will bear true to that mother plant if I just tie up the petals. But if you want to be really serious about it, to ensure the purity of the seed, especially if you're experimenting with cross-pollination and documenting which plant provides the pollen to the female flower plant, then you probably want to protect the flower completely before it opens. They make special bags for this. You can just take a loose fabric like muslin or a very fine mesh and totally enclose the flower both before and after it opens. That way it's opening inside a bag. There's no chance for an insect to get to it. Then you hand pollinate and you put a bag back over it so there's no chance of any insects getting to it and disrupting your plan. I don't mind leaving the flower open and allowing bees to come in because most of the time I'm not saving the seed. Hand pollination is simple, it's easy, I think it's fun. Most of the time you don't need it at all, but occasionally it might be necessary if there's a lack of pollinators in your garden. Either way, by knowing how to hand pollinate it will definitely make you 
a better gardener. And to help you on that gardening journey, well, watch one of these Gardener Scott videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.